Welcome to Cherry with everybody, where we die a little every day. Let's go. everybody we are here in Minnesota at Cherrywood with the amazing Carla so tell us a little bit about what we're gonna do today well we're gonna talk about this wonderful product and how it is made and how we come up with these gradations a little bit of color theory so much color you're just gonna die awesome <laughs> absolutely love it let's get started so guys we're gonna do a quick walkthrough of Cherrywood, so tell us a little bit about your products as we're going through here. All right, well, welcome to Cherrywood. Um, I have a lot of bundles and I have uh, single colors, and this is kind of our, our introduction, like our overview of our challenges that have been so popular. Um, we have bundles here that um, fat quarters and half yards. So this is the Prince challenge, and this was a really popular challenge. Prince um, musician is from Minnesota, so of course we had to do this challenge. Definitely pick some of that up there. And then for each um, challenge, we also publish a book. So those are available here. And, and it's okay if I show a couple pages of that? Yes. Guys, look at some of the amazing things that have been made. So these are all 20 inch square quilts, which it's incredible that they can squish that much creativity into such a well, small and in such a small color palette that mm -hmm. that right there what you see in the book is those four colors right there it's right. absolutely amazing and like the um van gogh, van gogh cherrywood challenge they were allowed to add colors to the quilts absolutely so this stunning. is kind of our overview of the challenges and of course we have princess diana um that is the challenge that's happening right now awesome so we have um all these gorgeous we have a nice display that shows you the bundles that we have um, these are eight fat quarters and you can see them kind of spread out a little more but you know they may have these cute little packs um, eight colors all ready to go this is our lightest bundle so this is really good for backgrounds super and, and you know it's really subtle but there's still a lot of beauty well, in it. and not all black sorry not all backgrounds have to be black or white. You right. Know, they, you can have a little bit of color in there. And some of you mentioned here as we're walking around the store is if we look at the cubbies, she's got some holes in there because yeah. of how fast this product <laughs> goes, guys. It yeah. is so amazing, absolutely wonderful product here. And let's see the next colorway. Well, this is Onyx Blend. So instead of just having one gray, it's really nice to have a selection of different values and you can mix it up in the quilt and it gives your quilt a lot of depth it, um, when you kind of stand back and look at the quilt, it, it has movement in it because you're not just using one gray. Well, a great representation of that is actually this little quilt right here behind us. This is the new Cherrywood 2022 challenge, but look what she's talking about here. Of These are all different grays to give your background a lot of depth in it with the lettering over top. I mean, it is super, super awesome. And that's why we're talking about gradations is so valuable because this makes it seem like it's one piece of fabric. Yeah, and speaking of subtle bundles, like we have a collection here, this one is called Thistle, and the the difference between each color is very subtle, but the overall effect is just, it's a more sophisticated kind of look because it's all low contrast. We're not going, the value change isn't very high, but it... But there is a change still, like it's not... Is. It's yeah. subtle, but enough that you actually can tell the difference between them. Right. Absolutely stunning. That would have been like a one-yard bundle, right? Yep, this is a one-yard bundle. Wow, absolutely so, awesome. And then in contrast, we have bright colors. This is our Tropicana bundle, one yard of each color. The um, suede texture is on every piece. Sometimes it's going to be a little more subtle. Sometimes it's a little more contrast, but it's not just a flat color. It's um, and another thing about cherry wood is there's no right or wrong side. That dye is saturated through, so that suede texture might be different on a different side of the fabric. So that was Tropicana. Um, and we have a lot of um, kind of grayed down colors. This is called um, Texas Ranch. And this is a muted kind of colorway, but still really earthy colors. I really like how the suede texture looks on our browns and golds especially. It really makes yeah, it look like, like leather. leather. I was about to yes. say, it gives it like a leather feel. Yeah, 
a lot of people use cherry wood for clothing and it looks like you're wearing leather. Absolutely amazing. Now, something else I want to talk about here is the patterns. We didn't mention this at the beginning of the video, but Carla's an amazing pattern designer, so let's check out the patterns. So, ton of patterns here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them? Um, so, I have a graphic design background, so okay. I love to design and write patterns. So I have a line of, I think I might have 15 patterns. Um, and when I'm designing, I'm designing specifically for the way we package our fabric. So Makes sense, makes um, sense. So this p pattern in particular is just eight fat quarters. So a lot of my patterns are eight fat quarters or eight half yards. Easy peasy. So then you don't have a lot of waste. You're, um, you're using the fabric efficiently. Well, and guys, this is a big one for me. You want a wall size right here on the back. It gives you eight fat quarters to make that size quilt. Double it up and it tells you how big it's gonna be in the end. Mm -hmm. That's really nice because it's hard to figure out the math on that once we get too far down the line there. So, love that. And a few of my patterns, um, because it, you don't use as much, it'll make two quilts because gotcha. fat quarters, um, you know. So, it, I really like to let the fabric do the work. Mm -hmm. You know, I've taken so much time to come up with this beautiful colorway. You don't have to cut it up into the tiny little pieces. It doesn't have to be a complex pattern. It can be very simple and just very dramatic. Absolutely. So this is our collection of color wheel. And of course, the color wheel is very important to Cherrywood. This is your typical painter's color wheel. Red, red orange, orange, yellow orange, and so on. So this is a very popular colorway because it's that color crayon kind of, gotcha. the 12 color crayon box of crayons. And let's see kind of what it makes, guys. This is one of Carla's patterns as well. This is called Petal Palette. Look how pretty of a quilt that is. And it follows then the color wheel, color wheel. I'm assuming. Yes, so this is a combination of our medium color wheel based on it, but I also have the light color wheel in the same 12 colors, just lighter, and, and then the dark color wheel. So, whoa. Ooh. Just like that? Just like that, it turns into, a, it's a gorgeous Absolutely piece, amazing. but it's also like a, a learning tool. This is great to have in your sewing wall, and so you can think about color wheel and color theory every day. Absolutely, and it just shows how dynamic this product can actually be, which I absolutely love. And I love how it comes in three different values. A lot of people would just stick with the medium tone because that's kind of like the middle of the road, but no, not here at Cherrywood. They make sure you can get all your values. Value range. This one also, this is just using the dark color wheel, but um, still just very rich and this is, you know, if you're not a bright person, um, this is still a gorgeous rainbow kind of effect. And I love this pattern because, again, it's very simple. You well, don't have to have a complex pattern. You can just sh let the cherry wood I, shine. I was just about to jump into that. I have 12 fat quarters. That's not crazy, right? right? Our stashes all have way more than that anyways. So 12 fat quarters. Not only that, look at the long arming or oh, the free motion work on this. This is a good way to practice this. A lot of open range here. You let your creative juices go here and you can do whatever you like. But something that's awesome here as well is whoever's done this changed color all the way through. Yeah. So that's the reason why you can't see the thread as prominent on the purple because it's purple thread, yellow, it's yellow thread. Super, super cool. Love the quilt. And I love how quilting just sinks into cherry wood. The thread, you know, we use cotton batting a lot. Mm -hmm. It just really shows off the quilting. Yeah, absolutely. And then I, let's just do a quick turn oh, here yeah. so people can see it. So this quilt is called Arizona. Um, we have a bundle, a collection called Arizona, and those are the, the colors that are used in these motifs here. Now this quilt was designed by our founder of Cherrywood, Dawn Hall, um, and it was the last quilt that she designed before she passed away. So I have re, um, kind of brought it back to life. We brought back the colorway and we brought back the pattern and I re-published um, it this year. So this is pretty special to our, our history. Um, it's a very precise piecing. It was so special that we had it quilted by Karen McTavish, who is a very well-known quilter here in Minnesota. So um, this is brand new, ready to go. Well, and I love that, first of all, the colors, kind of the vibe of the quilt is very Arizona-like. But the quilting on this too is absolutely amazing. Yes, this is her McTavishing that she's known for. And 
Um, you know, again, the cherry wood just showcases um, quilting stitches and uh, just sinks right into the fabric. Everyone sees cherry wood and we see these amazing colors, but you don't think that this can go traditional or stay in the darker tones? Absolutely. Let's oh, show yeah. them. Oh, yeah. Cherry wood was built on darker colors and um, immediately when I first saw cherry wood, I thought Amish because solid colors, but that depth and richness kind of modernizes it. But I mean, look at a very traditional pattern and the cherry wood just um, adds a spark to it. Absolutely. So yeah. if you find a color that goes into your Civil War quilts, yeah, absolutely, you can use it. Not only that, if you throw it on like a back or you play on your binding, mm -hmm. it'll give it that leathery, suede look. So it'll make it look more nostalgic. You know, it gives it that yeah. extra little flair to it. So and definitely cherry wood goes with anything in your stash. It's, you know, we obviously make cherry wood quilts. But think about adding it with your batiks and your your commercial fabrics. It just it mixes so with everything. Are you a purist then? Cotton okay. stays with cotton. Well, or no, everything, right? Everything. I'm I'm the same way. I we did a quilt in 2017 that it was a denim cotton toweling quilt. So when you felt it, you had all these oh. textures to it, and the quilt was only like black and gray oh, color school. Cool. So when you, it really was the feel and the touch of texture. Yeah, this which, looks great with Dupioni silk, which sounds weird because yeah. this is kind of rough and organic, but the contrast, yeah. um, it's absolutely, it guys. Everything. So something that we have to talk about is your color card here, which is absolutely amazing. So go ahead, tell us a little bit about it. So this is our brand new swatch box. We have 200 colors. And we decided instead of a card that you can't, you know, they're stuck on there, how about make a swatch card? Absolutely. And then you can see this is an actual piece of fabric. You get an actual swatch. And on the back, it tells you what the number is. So when you're ordering you, and you can keep track of things and then you can move it around and you can compare it to a color that, um, you know, which goal do you want to put this with? And then you can say, hey, this is pretty soon you're planning a project. Absolutely. You can punch a hole in there and kind of keep projects together. Well, and I got one of these swatch. Swatch box. Box, swatch boxes. <laughs> um, and it's amazing how much you actually use it because you're like, okay, I need to find something that goes with this. And even if you aren't get necessarily playing something cherry wood, you have all 200 values where you can be like, right. okay, I need a pink that looks like this. Go to your local quilt store and if they carry cherry wood, then grab that color, obviously. But if they don't, you can walk it right up into yeah, all the yeah, color Yeah, you wall. compare it with commercial fabrics. Um, and it also changes in the light, like we're in a bright sunlight and you can take it under fluorescent light and you can see how the color changes in the different rooms and the different lighting and um, and how it, it changes when it's next to other colors because that's Absolutely. really important about how they act next to other colors and this way you can overlap the, the um, swatches and Absolutely. see how they Absolutely. act. Absolutely. Which as far as I know, you guys are the only guys doing this, so that is absolutely awesome to bring a new kind of flair to the swatch card. Comes in this gorgeous box too. So the, I mean, that funny. is important. <laughs> is the box cherry wood? People have to know. Well, it's mahogany, but we can okay. pretend, yeah. <laughs> it says cherry wood on yeah, it. It's, it's close enough. I couldn't afford the cherry wood. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so guys, let's show you some more bundles here and loads of them to come. Yeah, so I'll just pick one here. This is a, a gorgeous one. Is that one. how it works? Just grab one? Yep, just grab one. This is Dutch Tulip. This is analog analogous colorway. So you're just going from a red Which to an orange. Which means red to orange? Yep, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And I love how you can just put two bundles together and look at that. Now you've extended the gradation. Now you've got 16 colors that go beautifully together. And you know, the intensity changes is like you're holding one that's kind of dusty. This is our Copenhagen. And that- Sweet. Which should, I mean, it should probably belong over here somewhere. Yeah, and this is that Arizona bundle that we put into a quilt, really dusty colors. So we try to get um, bright colors, dusty colors. I'm gonna end up with all of these here in a minute. I think there's one more here. Oh, get that indigo blend. Indigo. That's like um, nice denim colors. This is gorgeous in clothing because it really looks like denim. Absolutely true. I'm losing space here. And the last one, oh, obviously okay. there's way more oh, still you coming. That. Yeah, these you two, gotta get, uh -oh. these two are this, this is the problem with fabric guys, you gotta have favorite. it all. This is Madagascar. This one is a great seller for us. And I think it's because you're getting blues and greens and golds. And this is um, a hue gradation. We're not just going from 
one color dark to light. We're going through several hues or colors and coming up with interesting colors to, these are actually complementary colors. So they're opposite each other on the color wheel, but what you get in the middle is where my the magic happens, yeah. right? Absolutely awesome. And you want to talk about this one real quick? This one, Kiwi Berry, that is my favorite. And again with that green, look at the green, guys. You gotta have just a hue of green in there. It kind of ties it all together. Yeah. So, and there's many other bundles yes. as well. Obviously, we can't show every single one of them, but let's show you some of the other stuff she has as well. So guys, she's gonna teach us a little bit more about how you can take these smaller bundles and make them bigger to fit our styles. So go ahead. So these are called our four steps because there's four colors together. And this is Hot Medley, and this is Zest, and this is Violet Medley. But you'll notice if you put them in order, Right there. Boom. Yep. Now you have a gorgeous medley. Absolutely. And then let's see. We have. Maybe you want to embellish with some turquoise. Maybe you want some turquoise. Turquoise would be on the end here, like so. Yes. And, and then maybe you want a little bit of green. We don't have the one yard in the green, but you see, it just sells out too fast, guys. Yeah. Got the greens there. You can build it exactly how you want it. However, if you're a package person, you're like, I don't want to mess with that. That's why we have our 12 bundles. It makes mm -hmm. it really simple. You get 12 of them, but some people are gonna wanna experiment with their colors and what they love. But right. show them that orange there. Well, I guess technically, I mean, if we, yeah, you, you're making us get here. too technical yeah. now. Yeah. Now like the really orange should be down should there. Together. Yeah. Absolutely and, stunning. And this way you can add some value too. So you can get a dark and a light of one color. Um, again, if you want a background, especially for like applique, and you don't want just want one color in the background, if you mix it up and, and sprinkle different values throughout, that quilt is gonna have a lot more depth. Depth, dynamic, I love that word. So guys, we are kinda in the inventory room of Cherrywood, but now we have to understand a couple of things, is that Cherrywood is a manufacturer. So a lot of times when we say inventory room, you think you're walking into a quilt store, everything's on beautiful shelves and all that kind of stuff. We're in manufacturing, it's a little bit different. Everything needs to be really well organized. It has to have its number, it has to have its place. Just a different atmosphere than the typical quilt store, which I absolutely love being in some place like this. And we're gonna be able to talk to you guys and show you all the different colors. Very important in Cherrywood, the color wheel. So they start their color wheel right in the red. So let's see it. Yeah, so the 100s that I've, I've got everything numbered and this is our um, dark to light in our red. And then we drop down to red oranges. So we're working our way, our, working our way around the color wheel. Um, and this system that we have, we dye in two yard increments. So this is the fabric that is um, freshly dyed and pressed and it's in two yard pieces. But then we also prep it so that it is ready to sell in one yard increments and half yard pieces all ready to go and fat quarters. Well, and not only that, watch this guys. I'm gonna take a fat quarter here, fat quarter there, just going down her color palette. Yeah, exactly. And now you have a four by four, or sorry, your four, four step. step bundle in that particular color. So there's rhyme and reason to everything in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. People don't know this, so yeah, quilting in our storefront, if you walk into our color wall, it starts at red and then ends on the yeah. opposite end. Well, it ends yeah. at red. It starts at red, it ends at red. That's how mm -hmm. a color wheel works. But I love this system. So let's keep going down the color wheel here. So then we're moving into oranges. Um, and again, brown is just a darkened orange. So if you add black to orange, you're gonna get deep browns. And of course we've got clear colors, bright colors like orange, but then we have dusty tones like this mango color. So it's a, um, it's grayed down in tone and a lot of the cherrywood colors are grayed down and in my formulas, um, you know, that's when I'm thinking about the color wheel, I'm adding a complementary color to tone down the color. So this is still in our yellow colorway, but this is our dark, dark yellows. And then you can see um, it's turning a little bit of green because now we're moving into the yellow greens below. So we have leather, topaz, mustard, and the typical yellow, like the color crayon yellow. So the beach collection is dyed on a white base. Everything um, cherrywood is dyed on an unbleached muslin. Yeah, so this is our white, um, the base before we start dyeing. 
And the reason I wanted to start with white is so I could get these soft, clear colors. And if I would dye these colors on an unbleached muslin, they'd have a slight cream base. Yep. So this would look peach and it wouldn't look quite as clear. I couldn't it get it. It wouldn't look beachy. Yeah. Right? Yep. So these are all beachy. And of course, we don't have many warm beaches here in, Cal in uh, Minnesota, but. We've noticed. Yeah. It's uh, six feet of snow outside. <laughs> but I can still get that beautiful tone on tone suede look. Um, a little bit smoother feel to it. Absolutely. Well, we left off on greens over there, so it's time to continue our greens to our, what I would refer to as your truish greens. Yep, yeah, there's still some yellow greens up here and the limes, which is a neutral. You need a little bit of lime. And we have several different limes. We've got a really yellow citron. Um, this is a, a brand new color. This is frog. This is named after my favorite Muppet character. Kermit. <laughs> Kermit. Yeah, this is our royal blue. This is probably the most blue blue. Yeah, so up here we've got the turquoises, the ocean blues. And all the way across, the numbering system goes this way. Um, and then these denim blues, we've got dark to light, and we put that together in a, a bundle called indigo blend. Um, so that's the more I, I thought you were going to say the bundle's going to be called jeans or something like that. Jeans, it right? should be blue jeans, yeah. This is our Omnix Black, which is our top seller. It's um, difficult to get a very true saturated black. So um, we sell a ton of black. And even our, our next lightest one, charcoal. That's I mean, more me. Yeah, look at that Love gorgeous that. suede texture. And the thing with these tones here, like I understand that in the quilting industry, most of the time it's going to be a white background. Like we see it all the time. That's just because that's what people are making today. I am a big believer in blacks, the dark charcoals, because when you have a dark, dark charcoal, I'll grab a color for you so you guys can see the pop on it. We got our black here, we got a white here. When you add this pink, does it pop off of there? Yeah, absolutely, but not like yeah. your darker tones. Definitely. We're using tones that are running a little bit brighter than normal. I love to get a nice black, a nice charcoal background, and it can be any one of these ones that we're showing you to give you that added pop there. So let's go back to these neutral. And this is a grayed down, but you can see the purple in it, but you know, think out of the box if you want something that doesn't look like everybody else's background. So guys, after we get through all of these neutrals, just like any well done color will, it ends exactly back where it began with those red tones. Now that we've seen everything, it's time to learn a little bit about kind of the process of how this works. But we have to warn everyone, there's the secret sauce that we will not be showing anyone. It's the the lifeblood of cherry wood, you know, like, and that's what makes it true and that's what we love. But let's learn about the dyeing process, okay? Okay. So tell us about what this is and kind of the process from the beginning of how we get our fabrics. Okay, so these are rolls of 150 yards of unbleached muslin. So we put it on these rolls over here, and then we are measuring it and ripping it into two yard pieces. So give us a little demo here okay. on what this looks like. So we're gonna rip it into a two yard piece, and these are all pre-done already. Yep, and we accommodate for shrinkage. So our yard is not measured at 36 inches, it's um, longer so that after the dyeing process, you are getting 36 usable inches. And like, that's not really a usable centimeter right there because this is gonna fray a little bit, you know. And we rip it because we want it uh, straight on grain because we're washing it many, many times and it's gonna get distorted and, and um, we wanna make sure that even after pressing it, it has been measured straight on grain. Absolutely. So we'll always snap back to Absolutely. the Absolutely, I know. I gotta try this now. Yep. So, so let, let's try it. this. Can you do it in two rips or can you do it in one? I'm, I'm going for one here. If it was fully in fat quarters, that's that's the, my jam. Like fat quarters are my jam. <laughs> then you take out a pair of scissors, you cut, right? And then you rip. Just no, rip it? That this is not you gotta give it a snap at the end. And then you give it a snap at, at the end. Rip through the salvage. Okay. Well I'm gonna get one more in. Oh almost almost a, almost a one. I gotta do it in two. <laughs> So from here, this wonderful bin is then... Well, we have to wash it because it's stiff. You can kind of see there's um, there might be some oils or some, some sizing. Just in so the everyone production. can see at home. Like, yeah. 
So we want it stiff. to be, yeah, I've never done that before. It's very stiff. Yeah. So we wash it first and um, it has to be by wet. hand. Yes, we go to the Mississippi River and we get out our washboard. Right, yeah, right. We use machines. Okay. <laughs> so by wash, we mean. Wash it in the washing machine. Wash it in the washing machine, <laughs> help that get out. So show me what it's like to load one of these. What what are we doing here? So we're stuffing these machines full as much as we can. Um, well, we count it out. But um, we're just using these top loading washing machines. Um, we have machines that are set aside for this process. No dye goes into these machines to keep them clean. And, um, and probably no already dyed either. Right. Just, this yeah. is the, the plain Jane stuff. You right. go in there and got it. And then we use Synthropol, which is a detergent in the dyeing process, which is a, a common detergent. We also use that in the pre-wash um, just to get out any oils and get it prepared for dyeing. It, it's essentially like a degreaser for mm -hmm. fabrics just and a softener. Um, I, I would say it's pretty, obviously it's different, but it's like throwing your normal detergent in there just right. to get it ready. It you is know? a soap, so it'll suds up like a soap. Yeah. 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 Stuffed up, then you turn the sucker on. Obviously these are modified washing machines for what they do. It's gonna wash normal cycle. Yeah. Normal cycle. It looks something like this. Wet. Ready to dye. Ready to dye fabric. And this is what they're talking about. Like, you can see the strings. This might damage a little bit of the fabrics on the ends. They account for the damages, which is wonderful. Because a lot of people would say, well, I started with two yards, so I charged for two yards. They don't start with two yards. They charge for an actual two yard piece of fabric in the end, so. Now we are um, going to the secret sauce. Um, where the dye is mixed in our magical yeah. secret room, in which we're not going to show. So essentially I can tell you that, yes, these machines are modified to work the way we need them to work. Um, we've got a whole bank of uh, machines here, so we talked about we have eight step gradations. Yes. So there's one color in each machine, so that in today we can do an eight step gradation. Well, and that doesn't mean it's all the time, right? If you said, oh shoot, I need, um, I just need ten thousand yards of black. Yeah. No, everything turns into black, which yeah. is really cool. I, I think the whole process is cool. So it's just fun to see the color come out. So I've got just a, a two yard piece here that's wet, and um, we can see what color we've got in the the dye bath. Instant. It's orange. <laughs> and obviously there's more to this than just dip it in, pull it out, right. right? But it just shows you how cool this dye is. So this is actually a, an eight step gradation called Tropicana. So the next color is a little bit more yellow orange. I can't see the difference on that one, but it's different, okay? It is different. Do you want to put some in? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You dip it? Yep, dip it in, see what color it is. That, that's yellow. obviously yellow, right? Mm -hmm. That one's obviously. But just for sake of everything. Lime green. Lime's a neutral. Gotta have you, green. you gotta have the green. Look how pretty that is. And of course, we're, again, apologies for the, the machines, but um, we use these machines until they die. I yep. mean, we are, we're manual. Until they die. Yeah, until they die. <laughs> da, da, da. I see what you did there. <laughs> There's a little brighter green. much, much more darker blue there. We're now gonna finish up the process. I'm Lorene and I do a lot of the dyeing here. I'm the production manager. So once everything is done in the machines, we get to empty the dye water out. Okay, now we have our fabric done. It has been in the dryer to about a kind of a damp dry because now we want to put it through the mangle and this will finish drying it, press it smooth, and also it's where we do our quality control. The mangle is our, also called a rotary iron. This is what's um, hot, so you gotta watch your fingers there, and then it just has a foot pedal, and so we clamp the fabric in and start feeding it through, and I am going to pass this through several times to get it nice and dry, and I'm also want to see both sides of the fabric to make sure we like how it looks. No flaws and, and that the dye is the way we're hoping it will be. All right, and once it is dry, we will fold it and it's ready to be cut and assembled into 
the bundles like we make. So, do some pointers for me here. So, okay. Okay. So you're gonna kind of want to straighten out the. Uh, yep, that's the side we're gonna work with. No and crinkles. No crinkles. You would think that this would do something different than flatten things out. <laughs> to mangle something would sounds like if we're gonna like crimp it or Destroying, yes. destroy it, right? Yeah. I'm definitely not as fast as you. Like that, that's for sure, right? Am I under? Oh, I didn't even check to see if I got wrapped around the tube oh, or anything. Right. I have no idea how you guys are inspecting this at the same time. I'm just trying to make sure it doesn't eat my fingers yeah. at this point. <laughs> Ta-da! Now you do this, what, five more times? Six more times? Depends how damp it is. A couple more. Ah, oh, that probably only needs one more pass each side. Just one more pass. Up. That means that I get the official title of mingler. <laughs> so then, from that here... Probably ready to be folded, yeah. Folded to be prepared for bundles. Mm -hmm. So, let's jump over there. Okay guys, so we've just mangled. I just want to say ironed. We just ironed this. Now let's uh, see how we cut. All right, so we are set to, we work on the folds that we create. We actually don't cut as much as we slice. Gotcha. So I have a couple two yard pieces here and I'm just gonna slice through those. The way I just cut it, now they're all cut into one yard pieces. If I flip it over. No, okay, the one yards now, magic. Yep, yep. Now if I flip it over, I'm gonna slice through all of these folds here and then we have half yards. And we know that based on the way we folded it, so. Look at that. So You've done this once or twice, it looks like. A few thousand times. A few thousand yes. times. <laughs> and these are now half yards. These are now half yards. Let's, yep, let's this is a whole stack of half yards. Teach me the proper okay. fold here. Okay, I'll give you a few of them. Okay. So, we are going to... I fold away from me. That's just the habit yeah. I have. So fold in half? Yep, fold it in half that way. Double press. Yep. And then we take and fold it into the middle. Fairly close. We don't want too much gap there. Mm-hmm. Fairly close, not too much gap. I hope there's not a <laughs> test at the end of this. Fold it in half again. And these are our half yards, so these get into another fold to give this nice little skinny package. Professional right, right there. And band our strap. Yep. And put it on there, kind of snug. And kind of snug. There's not, snug. there's not a rule of thumb. Well, kind of snug. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to make it gotcha. you know, pucker in. Make but, sure that sticker's on there straight. But you don't want this to be able to slide off too easily. Look at that, guys. Yeah. And that's how we do it. Those are ready. Half yards. Super. Mm -hmm. Now let's have Carla come in here as well. So. Just like that, which is not just a one, we, we say that all the time, like yeah, just, just like, like that. that, four days later type <laughs> deal, that is how every single yard of cherry wood is made, right? Right. So this is such an amazing product and thank you so much for letting us come out here, learn kind of what you do, and not only that, we are also gonna be starting to stock cherry wood as well and you can grab it from cherrywood.com or cherry wood if you'd like. And I don't even know what else to say. This has been such mind blowing for me, but more than anything, big thank you to both of you ladies for laying us out here. All right? Well, thank you so much for yes. coming. It's been a lot yeah. of fun having It's been you awesome. Here. It's been <laughs> awesome. Love right. this place. So we'll see you next time. So in the spirit of being at Cherrywood, you have to have colored hair dyed like me, right? Yes. So we're going to try this. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> dyed cottons you're gonna get on the market. Come and join us. It'll look better than this. <laughs> <laughs>